Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. Today I'm going to be reacting to Romeo by Sega Bodega. And basically I'm reacting to this because I've of course heard a lot of Sega Bodega produced songs like the likes of Shy Girl, Dorian Electra, Caroline Polacek, Earth Eater. Uh, the, the list goes on, but I can't name them all off the top of the head. Yeah, so I thought, you know, it, it, I'm gonna listen to a Sega Bodega album, and that is gonna be Romeo. And also I've seen quite a few people request this. And just recently it was brought to my attention by someone on Instagram. And I was like, you know what? It's about time I get into it. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. So if you'd like to go on Patreon, please do link in the description. You'll be able to watch this video uncut and have many other benefits depending on what tier you choose. Follow me on Instagram, I shall follow you back. Um, that link in the, is in the description too. If you'd like to send me a tip for what I do, then there's a little thanks button down uh, underneath the video over here or here. I don't know yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, because not all my videos are monetized, so that's like just like a really helpful little thing for me to keep me going, you know? Keep me motivated, keep me alive. <laughs> but um. Yeah, and also, if you do like the video, like, comment, and subscribe, because I love reading your comments, um, but only do so if you enjoy the video. And I also have a Discord, so if you wanna join the Discord and talk to like-minded people, then the link for that is in the description too. But anyway, let's get on into it. The first song is called Effeminacy. Effeminacy. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but Effeminacy, yes. Anyway, let's get into it. All right. Feminacy. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, that's an interesting little sound. You don't own a feminacy, do you? What does a feminine look like? And you definitely. Coming in hard on the first song. That's pretty. Definitely feel the shy girl uh, element. <laughs> oh my god. That goes hard. I love how the chorus is actually like black. Nice. Really amazing vocal and manipulation. What a beautiful combination of warm, ethereal sounds with like an experimental meat. <laughs> wow! And now with that guitar, it gives me like a uh, like newer Caroline Prototype. I have heard one song actually. I still haven't posted it. I recorded it ages ago. <laughs> yeah! Uh, oh my god, that's hard. It's so frantic. There's no moment to stop there. I love that, like, when the beat is like dun 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 dun, like fast, it, it really feels like frantic. You literally feel like you're like, ah, I can't get out of this. I'm stuck inside it, but in like the best way ever. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna read what um, is said about the song actually. This was the track that made me decide I needed to start trying to vocal the beats. I would usually just send over to a rapper or someone with a rougher style of vocal. I would usually just assume I wouldn't fit over something like this, but I'm so happy with the balance of the aggressive and calm. It's probably in the top three of the whole album. Nice! So like, he, like that, I don't know, Sega would take a go by he, him? I just want to make sure. Yeah, he. I love how he put one of his favourites at the very start, like really setting up the album, being like, okay, this is one of my favourites, so hopefully you'll all enjoy it too, if you like my sound. That's cool. And I also like it when producers who like produce for many people do their own albums. I think that's really special actually. And we get to just hear them do what they, it's just their ideas. And maybe some other people's ideas, but it's just really, 
them all over, but then I could hear the Caroline, like I reacted to one of Caroline Polachek's songs and I've forgotten what it's called already. I really enjoyed it though, but it had like a nice Spanishy feel to it. I, I, I Obviously I need to post that reaction. The reason I haven't posted it yet is because I was gonna post, I was gonna react to another new song and I thought it premiered the evening that I was reacting to it. Um, but actually it, it was going to premiere a couple of days later and then I got the flu so then it all like went a bit silly and so I was all like oh now the video doesn't really make sense but I'll do it anyway. Yeah no that was really cool. Who was doing the singing then? Additional vocals shy girl. Yeah it makes complete sense because I was like this has definitely got a shy girl feeling and well yeah there you go additional vocals shy girl. <laughs> <laughs> makes complete sense and like even just the pacing of it they they seem to be like they've done a lot of music together they feel like i feel like they're like friends at this point because they've done so much together it's really cool i love to see it okay next song is called angel on my shoulder mm, i just love how hefty the sounds are i don't like it when people hold back on sounds this is going all in on that like ah motion to it. It goes back and forth, you know? It's almost like side actually. <laughs> Love that little like the drum and bassy sound and the drum. And gives me a theater. Wow. Oh, I love the emotional side of it. I love that, it's like, it's like the tables and cups and, you know, that's really nice. I love the organic sound of that, really like clapping, slapping, all these things, <laughs> clapping and slapping. But yeah, I love how organic that was. I actually gave it like a little different shift at the end there. Yeah, beautiful. And the words were beautiful too. It says here, according to the singer, the song is about the idea that guardian angels are just friends we've never met who died young or were just never born. What a beautiful sentiment, what a beautiful thought, you know, or opinion, belief, whatever you want to call it. Like, guardian angels are just friends or, you know, that we'd never met, looking out for us. Maybe we're friends in past lives. I don't know, that's really quite a stunning thought. Sega has said, I was with a friend who means a lot to me and started to imagine what it would be like if we never met and I would have had no idea how much this person would mean to me. Then I started to realise that there are people I will never meet who would have changed my life, maybe due to dying young or just never having been born. 
and the idea that those people are our guardian angels yeah absolutely and you know it's interesting because like with your friends well certainly with my friends I could feel a very strong soul connection you often feel like soul mates with your friends um sometimes more than your partner you know and those are my girlfriends I feel like completely connected to to the soul like we've been friends for many 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 years it's a beautiful beautiful feeling actually and just shows how much you love them and how much they love you but yeah lovely beautiful song loved it right next song is called all of your friends think i'm too young for you oh here we go all your friends think i'm too young for you it's got that glitch princess vocal oh the song like well the majority of the song was like this dark kind of like hot like maybe hip hoppy trappy but like mixed with like a s experimental electronic sounds that make it just feel so like oh I don't know just dark and like filthy right but not super filthy where it's like not yeah I can't explain it. it's just like not the ultimate filth <laughs> But like still like that deep, you know, darker sound. And then it lifts into this kind of summery sound at the end. But yeah, interesting, the lyric, lyrical content. It says here, the original idea for this was a beat from 2014, which I believe has popped up in some mixes at one point or another. In 2020, I did a session with Taylor Sky of Jockstrap, which I've been requested to listen to as well, who I really admire as a producer. And we ended up going into it and finishing it pretty quickly. Those weird glitchy simps he brought to it are perfect. Absolutely. I find it funny as well. Like now, like with these types of songs, I just kind of like move with them, feel them. But I'm not necessarily shocked by them anymore like when I first started listening to like hyper pop or experimental electronica whatever you want to call it industrial sound I don't know like I used to feel like what the heck and now I'm more like yeah I, I know I know this is a thing <laughs> so I just enjoy it in a different way now and in a weird way it makes me sad because I almost wish that I could go back to that feeling of like what is this you know but that is just not ever going to happen i can't go back to that feeling now um but of course there'll be new genres sparking up throughout time that will do that to me again um but it doesn't matter because i am just a fan of this sound like and i love it so i know i'll be happy throughout this album because like, this sound really does get me like hyped and feeling good it just I just love it so much and it makes me super happy. So yeah, I'm, I was really excited to do this album and even more excited now that I'm listening to it and enjoying it. Okay, next song is called Only Seeing God When I Come. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, let's go. 
Heaven is a place we won't go Hanging at the gate of your love I'll be waiting for forever The place we won't go Saying it's a turn out to light Oh, that's nice It's got tension in that little drum pattern breaks into the release. sound as well you know but then again it makes complete sense especially when you think of a uh, um the new shy girl album um i always want to call it firefly but that's a single nymph <laughs> nymph <laughs> yeah it gives me that like an energy from nymph for sure beautiful and a, a newer caroline polacek sounds as well cool and this did come out in 2021 a couple of years ago interesting oh it's just so pretty really pretty and I, I actually those bits there were bits in that that did take me by surprise some of like the uh eclectic like drum patterns and like the way it glitched and stuff was really quite like oh oh like got you like that like oh that's nice oh satisfying <laughs> but yeah you could definitely hear some of those like reverse reverbs that like uh, like a pre-delay that comes in that gave me that earth eater uh kind of you know, sound that she has. But anyway, it says here, me and Donna Missile work on a lot of music, which basically starts from her sending me completely a cappella vocals and I build the track around it. I love that, you know. I love like um producers, musicians that can build a song around vocals. And actually some people work better that way. But for a lot of musicians, they like to make their sound first and then have the vocal played on top. Uh, it kind of makes a little bit more sense like a vocal comes later um yeah but it's cool having it done the other way around I don't know I, I like that I actually find it quite impressive she sent a vocal over for Only Seeing God and I instantly connected with it and asked if I could develop upon it into a track for my record this was simultaneously my nod to things like early garage but also getting to scratch my Aphex twin slash square pusher itch yeah and I wanted to talk about garage because you know the drums are I couldn't remember but I feel like garage and I don't mean garage as in garage rap like garage grime or whatever you want to call it <laughs> Um, garage, early garage, um, whatever. I feel like they had those drums that were very, they're like borderline drum and bassy drums. I said drum and bass just because I didn't want to say garage uh, and be wrong. But now he said it, I'm like, I wish I said it earlier, but that's okay. That's okay. I don't know a lot of garage songs. It was a very short moment in time where that was a popular genre I think and yeah of course it's used a lot now but um I don't know enough about it to really be able to confidently be like oh it sounds a bit garagey you know I don't want to say that and be wrong but I guess I wouldn't have been wrong but that's okay that's okay okay next song is I need nothing from you well I try to be open it sound right 
To have it be perfect, whatever. Oh, very image in heat. I need nothing from you. Isn't that everything we wanted? I love that synthesized just kind of vocal. Oh, pretty. That was really well, I nice. Try to be open. To have it be perfect, whatever. I need nothing from you to give me my time. Right? Isn't that everything we wanted? Just to feel alive and make it sound right. Wow. I don't feel any reason. I need nothing from you. But to give me my time. It's almost like a hymn and a mantra. Just a repetition of these lines, just so important to say goodbye, I guess. a very stripped back one there and actually quite gorgeous and I love the way it subtly builds but like before you know it it's quite kind of a big moment a very holy moment as well I'd say and I don't mean that in a religious way I just mean it like when you think of like uh spirituality and coming together and being you know, like a sanctuary safety that you know what I mean? I could almost picture a church in, in this one for sure, said here, a few years ago, me and B, 1991, were jamming an idea with a couple different ideas in it, and somewhere in the middle was this very quick section. I was listening to Down to the River to Pray. I love that song! I went down to the river to pray, studying about those good old days, and who shall wear the starry crown? Oh Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down. Come on down, won't you come on down? Oh, sisters, let's go down. Down to the river to pray. <laughs> Just had to sing that whole moment. But um, no, I used to listen to that with my stepdad um, and my mom as well, actually. We used to put it on and it would build and build like, oh, mothers, let's go, go down. Oh, fathers, let's go down. And, you know, it, it's a simple song, but the way it builds is so, it's just beautiful and actually makes so much sense that this was kind of inspired by that because, like I said, the same sections going again and again, the same, like, lyrical content, repeated, repeated, but building and building in this beautiful way. And I said it felt holy. I was listening to Down to the River to Pray by Alison Krauss a few years later and wanting to create this same sense of gospel feel. It's my favourite song, I think, from the album. Oh, yes, and you really did create that sound, my darling. You really did. Lovely and modernised and in his own way. Really, really stunning. Okay, um, and then the words are lovely. Well, I try to be open and make it sound right. But don't feel any reason to have it be perfect, whatever. I need nothing from you but to give me my time. Isn't that everything we wanted? You know, but don't, I don't have the reason to have it. To, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter, whatever. I don't need anything from you. I just need your time. And I need you to give me my time. You know, like, don't waste my time. Let our time together be part of my time that is worth spending. I, I guess that's kind of where I'm going with it. And then, isn't that everything we wanted? Just, isn't that everything we wanted? Just to feel connected. And it doesn't matter if you're 
when you're being open, it doesn't all come out right. It's just that you're being open. That's enough for me. I don't know. That's how I took it. But it's beautiful. I went down to the river to pray, studying about those good old days. All right, no, we're not going into that again. <laughs> I tried making a version of that like a uh, couple years ago where I like did like harmonies and even got my daughter to sing on it as well. I don't think I have that anymore though. I wonder if I can, I do. I really doubt it. I think it was on like my old laptop as well. No, I couldn't find it. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. And it's, this video isn't about me and my music, is it? No. So yeah, let's keep going. Next song is called Nature... Naturopath. 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 Oh, come off it. Let's go. With Charlotte Gainsbourg. Scary, actually. Oh, it's in French. A Francais. Ooh! Interesting ending. Ding, ding, ding. Is it going to move into the next song like this with Arca? Feet Arca? Mm -mm. J'adore. J'adore. Love that. Okay. It's called Sisada. Feet Arca. Sisada? Wait, I need to actually read what I said here about the last song. I got to meet and work with Charlotte at the end of 2020 and ended up having a three-day writing trip turn into two weeks. It was one of those ones where the ideas just kept coming. This is one of a bunch of things I think are extremely special. Special. Oh yeah, especially moments like that. That can make a song even more special just because of like the writing process being something that turns from three days into two weeks means you're really enjoying your time. Very cool. But anyway, let's, sorry, Sasada, let's do it. Open 
Why? ones that could have just gone forever and I would have just still been here like <laughs> floating away with it. These outros are so interesting though. Like they shift so much from the the song but oh beautiful absolutely just stunning. Like I said it was cool like it had a coolness to it, but like a hot, there's like weird, like synthy guitar sounds. It gave like fiery, orangey sparks. But then the rest of it, just like the, the breathiness of it all, it was like this cool blue. It was a very interesting uh, mix there. Oh, just stunning. Where's Sega Bodega from actually? I'll have a look in a minute. But uh, what he said about the song is, Ark is an artist who, through her work, has shaped who I am as an artist, as she has so many. I'd never. I'd be nervous to ask her to jump on this track because sometimes when you're absolutely positive, someone will be into an idea. More often than not, they aren't. Oh, I know the feeling. But I sent it and think that same day or a day later, she sent back these vocals and I was obsessed. Oh my god, can you imagine? Just like not even a yeah, sure, I'll jump on it. Just a send the vocals. <laughs> That's even cooler. I'd just be like, oh, oh, okay, uh, thanks. <laughs> That was really pretty, really pretty. Oh, apparently Sega Bodega was born in Scotland. So same as uh, Sophie. Oh no, he was born in Galloway, Ireland, but in the origin is Glasgow, Scotland. So did he, did he move to Scotland? Born in Ireland, and I guess moved to Scotland when he was young? Someone let me know. This is what I'm getting off Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not always very correct, but that's cool. I didn't know he was um, English. I actually felt like with some of the sounds he uses, there was like little Spanish influences, you know? And maybe he just likes that. And with the uh, name of the album being called Romeo, I feel like Romeo is like a, is it a Spanish name or like a Greek name or something? Uh, or Italian, Rome? <laughs> let's see italian name from yeah italian of course rome that italian name from the late latin romeus which means pilgrim to rome interesting is romeo a person that he knows or or is his real name romeo what's his real name what's sega bodega's real name salvador yeah he also has a spanish -y name like salvador he's an irish scottish music producer Crazy. Okay. I feel like he's quite worldly. <laughs> but yeah, let's move on to it then. Romeo. Let's go. Let's go, Romeo. Early in the morning. Feeling blue. Early in the morning. Just come with some morning. I never knew it wasn't true. Nice. Wow, that one felt very 
very, very personal. It's not my favourite on the whole album. And it's funny because it's a title track, but I still enjoyed it. I still really enjoyed it. And just to say it's not my favourite doesn't mean I didn't like it. It's just not my favourite out of the ones I've heard. Um, but it still had a beautiful sentiment. It was simple and beautiful. It felt personal. It felt cute. It felt very, like, minimalistic. Uh, yeah, it just felt personal. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. Sega has said, this is the oldest track on the record. Kind of feels most like something that could have been on my last record. I think it's cute, though. Okay, so, like... He's like, I think it's cute though. <laughs> Seems pretty chill about it, but it is so pretty. But um, yeah, let's move on. Next one is called Um Um. Let's go. Ooh, scary. Getting a bit of like a uh, pentatonics going on here. <laughs> Carrying it. I love that reverse pre delay oh, on the vocal. Definitely sounds like someone who has passed away. It's kind of a positive sound in a way. Another kind of simple sound, but really not simple for the vocals. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Right. <laughs> Before we get into the last one, I'm just going to see what is written here. Oh, God, I've just read the first sentence in my head. Well, I just saw the name Sophie and <laughs> I already just knew what was going to be said. Sega has said, I had Sophie in mind the whole time I wrote this. I would never have imagined I'd be writing a song like this for her and I hate that this is where we're at. Isamaya French, who is one of my dearest friends, is the vocal carrying the whole instrumental. Brilliant. Did all the vocal layering. She's my go-to person for ideas. We sort of whipped this instrumental up really fast on one random day. Oh, I knew it was about someone who had passed away. I just didn't know it would be about Sophie. And I said it if I had like a positive feeling, you know, saying I can still see you, I see you in everything, I see you in the sunshine, I see you in the rain. And the good thing about it is like, we can see so much of Sophie's music within other people's music. Her legacy will live on forever. Oh, it's just still sad though. <laughs> Damn! That is one for everyone, isn't it? That's one for the fans, that's one for Sophie. That is a real beautiful message to Sophie. And I was reading it like, gosh, this is definitely about loss. And it even comes across that way in the first bloody sentence, in the first line of the song. Whew. Okay, right. Anyway, moving on. The last song now, and it's called Lucy. And it looks like it's spelt Lucy, L-U-C-I, like short for Lucifer. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, well, I'm guessing it's that. Let's go for it. Yeah, we've got like a you know, a bit more of a uh, one for the end of this album. Ooh. Wow, what 
theta. Mmm, those drums again. Chaotic. And like, so high up and the EQ. I know what Sega Bodega does, but... That's amazing. Oh, the guitar. That is gorgeous. gorgeous last song it is interesting like because like the themes did carry throughout for sure but it did feel like when it got to the song with Arca like that it shifted very much into like a very ethereal sounding earth eater feeling and of course like I said he's he's produced for earth eater so it's not you know I'm not saying it like oh it sounds like earth eater it's like no it like it is well it's not earth eater but you know what I mean the production style is it, it's the same producer <laughs> Words do not defy me now. Sometimes I'm like, who's singing? Who is singing? I really would love to know. If anyone does know, I would love to know. It had such an earthy sound, and I was like, is that Earth Eater herself? You know? What's Earth Eater's real name, actually? Alexandra Druchin. And it's interesting because obviously, uh, Earth Eater produced a lot of her album herself. You know, um, the I'm on about Phoenix Flames. I don't know if Sega Bodega even did a, a, a version, uh, did a um song on that. Um, let's see what song he. Yeah, so it looks like he did a song called Scripture, which is not one I've heard. I don't think. Um, I'm not sure what else he's done, but she's obviously inspired by Sega Bodega or or the other way around because those vocals are earthy. Uh, like it's unreal how earthy they are. It's like the same thing. I'm so confused. I just need to know more. And I can't, for some reason, my research is not doing well. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, honestly, all I can say is please let me know um, who does like kind of feminine vocals on these songs on the Romeo album. Um, very, 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 very interested and just can't figure it out. And like I said, it sounds like Earth Eater and there's moments where obviously you had the shy girl feeling and and they are people that he's produced for here and there. So, hmm, nice little blend going on. But yeah, lovely album. Anyway, like, actually talking about the album. Really cool album, really fun. Like a lot of like kind of like nice experimental sounds, hyper pop sounds. But also you could definitely hear Sega Bodega's, his, his specific sound. He actually uses a lot of Latin sort of sounds too. And I suppose, with, like I said, with the album being called Romeo, that makes sense with the Italian name and so on. But um, wow, <laughs> yeah, cool. That was really cool. It was short but sweet. I really hope you enjoyed my reaction. And yeah, please do like, comment and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And I shall see you next time. Thank you. Bye.